Second. <coughs> Mr. Gady? Yes. Mr. Kressler? Yes. Mr. Bateman? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Mr. Neal? Yes. I'm here. The uh, next order of business is open forum. Um, you do not have anyone signed up for the forum, so we will move on to the uh, next item on the agenda, which is open business, which is a uh, discussion on the special plan district application for three months. So, any points, discussions? Do you care to comment on why land is brought in as low density? Yeah, and it, it's been said a couple times tonight, just for the benefit of everyone there, it's automatic in our code in our model, that all property that can extend immediately starts with residential low density. I think it's also pointed out, but I think it's worth reiterating that you don't have to change the zoning, but this body can change the zoning, and I think that's what Greece is asking you to do. They're asking you to put the plan district in that would alter Dave, did, did, uh, is this in the city school limits? Meaning, yes. Okay. yes. Dave, can you comment on the uh, sanitary sewer and its sewer available at the property or is it being set up to this property? I believe the sewer capacity would be accessed along the state of 48. Um, and we are primarily involved with the water uh, and stormwater reviews, uh, sanitary. Sanitary sewer are used uh, by MSD. Um, we focus mostly on water capacity, our ability to water it, our ability to provide fire service to it, and our ability to um, monitor. We, we do all stormwater. Sanitary sewer goes through MSD. The sewer, sewer, sanitary sewer is available at the site, it's not being extended to the property. It's all 48. Where it would have to be extended would be. I believe, it, I believe there's a, uh, a main that runs along State Route 48 that comes out of the grad out of the um, out of the white pillars development and works its way down that way. Um, don't know the exact location or which home it comes through the easement, but I believe that is the main there's a main there um, along that location. I get the background on that. We've had, um, this has come up before on several other projects. The reason the property, they want to come on and got it incorporated to Loveland is when the sewage plant was built, Loveland was designated to have so many taps. We have capacity that was dedicated to Loveland. We have capacity. The county does not. And that's why all of the costs, the areas adjacent to Loveland over because we have the ability to give them sewers where if they try to develop an account on a county basis, they cannot do it other than having sewer. So, sewer, yeah. So the, so the, the key is that MSD does have the capacity and the capacity is committed to the local, not to the county. And that's what, and that makes, the need for sewer makes them want to get into the plus they get the police protection. I, I have a couple comments. I I agree that uh, the traffic's a problem actually. since I've been on this board. It's, it's always been a complaint of the community, so obviously uh, I'm aware of it that the community member recognize it and sympathetic to all your concerns. Uh, I also think some of the information being shared by the developer is a little bit misleading. Uh, two homes per acre is not, not accurate. It's actually more along the lines of uh, 71 homes if it was two, acre, two homes per acre. I mean, there's 37 acres that are being developed. So, you know, that's kind of a misleading bullet point. Um, I also think the traffic study not taking into account known facts by the traffic engineer and the attorney misleading and then to argue that it's a factual point is misleading. Um, so I'm not 
sure that I can vote to support the change in zoning. As it yeah. um, let me remind everybody too, what we're doing at this point is reviewing the concept uh, to see if it would merit moving a motion that I have to recommend um, to adopt it uh, the Senate City Council. Um, if it were to if we were to motion and, and adopt it, it, it would then come back to this body for the detailed analysis of the actual details of this plan. So at that point in time, this is this body can look at setbacks, we can look at debts, we can look at all these things that are being asked for in this. And then um, taking a quick consideration on the we, we all support the committee to go out here as well. Uh, we have to follow though as a regulatory recommending body um, the, the guidance we have. Um, so, uh, 
again, in, this, in the area of sensitive site planning, we talk about its relationship with its neighbors. And on one side is the Claremont County Park, and on another side is St. London, which is using the you know, football fields and recreation. So I don't know that 209 homes in between those two represents you know, a, a smooth transition. Of, you know, is that in the sphere of sensitive site planning? Um, then it says, uh, it is the intent of this section to provide, it is the intent of a, of a, of a special planning district, it is the intent of the section to provide for a district which will permit a greater range or mixture of compatible uses in areas than would be allowable in the standard zoning. And so, a greater range or mix of compatible uses, I think one of the things that is interesting there to me is this aspect of floor area ratio. So, being new to this, Definitions and the vernacular here. This is essentially the relationship between the lot size and the structure, the floor area ratio. And so, what's listed in the in the uh, proposal is a ratio between two to four and three to five. I mean, it's a little fuzzy with the math because we do it in decimal points in the you know, code. But uh, again, that's uh, a lot area coverage of between 50% and 60% of built structure on the lot. So that's putting a lot of house on um, a larger area of the, of, the, of the lot. Whereas we're looking at you know, 0 0.20 uh, for low density, 0 0.20 for medium density. So it, it goes beyond our, our normal uh, floor area uh, uh, ratio. And it's the same floor area <coughs> ratio roughly on all of the different um, you know, they have legacy, heritage, and tradition. It's, it's, it's large on, in all accounts. So I don't necessarily see that as a greater range or mixture of capital uses. Uh, and then the, the, the other thing it says, it says, while also requiring features that protect against negative impacts of incompatible land uses or harm to the environment. And so looking at some of the plans, I see some things that are interesting in terms of, um, I, I guess you could say, is this against the negative impact. Uh, there's a, a, a pretty sharp uh, curve uh, to coming into the, the on abandoned mill. The, the, I don't know how, how safe that is from a safety perspective. The uh, abandoned mill entry is a quite a sharp uh, turn into a uh, heavily uh, inclined area. Again, sorry, I'm not the expert to take it back to my voice cap the top of the map. And then in uh, another area of maybe negative impact is lots 127 through 133, 176 to 180, 157 and 158 are, are very heavily you know, steep grades. Uh, so I, you know, that, I don't know what kind of impact that's going to have on, on, on stormwater, um, just in, in the general uh, neighborhood. And then the other thing related to the stormwater and the runoff is there's a five foot to ten foot combined side yard setback, which is difficult to accommodate the stormwater on those uh, adjacent lots. So um, I think those things, to me, cause pause when it comes to. Uh, oh, and then the, finally, the last issue from the city's perspective is there's a connector road, and right around in the middle is sort of the retention pond. Uh, and there's a dam, sort of the road creates a dam. Uh, and so I'm just a little concerned about the amount of water pressure um, there. It's sort of in the area of, uh, let's see, go back, go back to my notes here. Um, the road serves as a new dam and it may have a continuing impact on the function and integrity of the roadway. It's the embankment on the west side of the proposed road at this location, the pond crossing, it just seems like there's a little bit of a, of a pressure point. So, uh, again, from a negative impact and, and the long term consequences, is that going to become an area that the city is going to have to uh, look, look at and address? To? Again, I, I don't know the answer to that. I'd be open to hearing some perceived that. But that's, to me, that, those are the looking at the application and looking at the purpose and scope for me. Those are I can answer some of your concerns. Um, part of the 
reason we have special planning businesses. When you look at those hard numbers in the charts, the fact that the, they have open space, you kind of count that toward. In other words, okay, to get this open space, we're going to scrunch the houses on little smaller lots and change that more ratio. So that, that's part of what is involved in our looking at the project for um, special planning district. Um, as a matter of fact, um, I've lived in love for 50 years on I'm just commission over 20. Um, several of the people here spoke against planning and zoning, making special planning districts. They happen to live in the special planning districts. So I lived in one. I didn't know it was a lot of commission. So, and to me, it just looks like a medium density subdivision. So, um, the, the whole purpose of the special planning district is when you have an area like this, they've already got some ponds, they've got some ravines. Okay, let's start pulling things in tighter. Let's change the lot size. Let's change the ratios a little bit so that we can preserve those features that we want to preserve. And as far as the drainage is concerned, we've got a city engineer that worked with her for 20 years. She's not nice when it comes to drainage and the whole um, the uh, apartment complex on Love Madera, they were going to run to an existing 12 inch pipe when they got down to the hill, and her calculation showed it should be 12 and a half inch. So they had a rip out of an existing pipe that was 12 inch, put in a 15 inch to meet her standard. So um, I, I really don't worry too much about drainage, and that really comes in later when they, they get to the design issues. So um, the other thing is talking about what we I'd like to solve the school issues, but that's been voted in place. And I'd like to solve the recreation, but years ago we had a vote on YMCA. It's down voted down. Um, I also, recently there's an article in the Wall Street Journal that the last 20 years we have underbuilt based on um, established, new established family units. We have underbuilt homes in, in the United States by 50%. So, you know, we just... Now, the one thing that I personally live is, I live on a cold set. There's 14 homes. Seven of the homes are occupied by retirees. We'd all like to downsize. But there's nowhere for us to go. Right now. So that, that's an issue. Um, that's basically all. I, I like that they have some patio homes. About a third of the development, and um, I would really like to know what the ratio is of patio homes across the street that were built, and how many children live in those patio homes. To see what that, how that number would work out for the school district. Um, I've been up there a few times, and I really don't see much evidence of um, those homes having children in the household. I'd like, I'd like to know that number. So that that could off the street, but yeah, yeah, I quite close. Yeah, yeah, there's a stretch of patio homes in there that um, would basically have the same number. So that's all I have for right now. I, I originally thought about maybe we need to update the traffic study, but I understand what he's saying that it was 60 years ago. I had to call on the city of Columbus traffic engineering, so I have a little bit of background. I'll go ahead and make a few comments. Um, so obviously this being annexed in front of my, my township, um, there really is a positive, I think, because in this location, whatever happens here, there's people living there, and kids there in the school district. So if we're saying Miami Township, then my Township can do whatever they want with that property. It's currently zoned uh, mixed use institutional. Uh, that includes um, residential, and then uh, you know, they can also then rezone it to just about anything that they want. So that is a good thing. Um, looking at you know, some of our, our guiding documents uh, related to comprehensive plans, the, the 2002 comprehensive plan actually does mention this property. It identifies 14 locations for, for growth. And this, this is one of them, and it identifies it as residential. Um, the draft version of the comprehensive plan that I think was mentioned by one of the, uh, by somebody that spoke, uh, it's, it's in draft format, 
it has a section called expansion opportunities and there's a picture of this property um, in, this, uh, in the document so it's using that for discussion of expansion but i'll read real quick real quick what it says uh, it is possible that additional expansion opportunities for the city may arise that will allow for new development potential this may include new low density residential development to the north and east of the city and new commercial development along the primary thoroughfares so again some of those tools that we have to look to to help you make decisions um, again it does indicate this to be a residential development i think we're, we're hearing and everybody here as well that we recognize that we'll, we'll put this out So the other question I, I, I would wonder would be, was this ever considered to be developed by trees at a different density, residential low density, residential medium density, or was special planning district always the council? Back to the background again, uh, SPD 9, 13, and 14 were brought in the same way, low density, three zones, the center was now medium. And of course, across the street is white colors, which is 2.4, which is at the high end of the uh, medium density. Yeah, I think one of the issues is that um, the hobbling stock in Lumberland is um, pretty much uniform right now. I think there's a that it sounds like. And, and we did have other um, people present to us over time when we were doing the, the uh, looking at trying to put in the master plan. One of the, one of the studies talked about um, empty nester homes and, and types of homes that aren't in Loveland right now. People that want to stay in Loveland but cannot um, do so because they're the housing stock and not for, for downsizing it's just banking on it as well. So I think that's um, a consideration that, that has to be thought about. And, and that's what we heard too, not just today when Loveland and I you know, I graduated from Loveland High School in 1982. I grew up here. I, I was here on Loveland. You know, there was nobody downtown. And, and it was a decaying depression down. I said, well, I got to be here, you know. Um, so I, I can appreciate that. And then with the growth comes, you know, the, the struggles we all have in, in traffic and, and, and trying to figure out what we want to be next year and 10 years, 20 years from now. And trying to set that. So um, you know, the special planning districts give us the ability and pull and, and change things a little bit to try to, to, to manipulate those things. And we have some control over it when we do it this way too. We just aren't, uh, you know, I know I'm uh, pretty concerned about the, the layout and the, the density. So we have to have some say in how we want to make some adjustments and just moving forward. Um, so we're not just you know, at this point moving what it presented to us. We're strictly moving in concept of whether it, it, it can be the intent of the special planning district. process and we greatly appreciate everybody's input. I mean that's what makes us a great community. Um, you know we have to follow those, those, those procedures and that's one reason we have this is this is actually um, uh, the city brought these these meetings, public meetings, um, in greater numbers um, to hear everybody's input versus having it later in the process where all of a sudden, hey here's the plan, we gotta start you know vote yes or no on it. So that's kind of I have a problem in that, you know, everybody wants low density, but part of it is you get 72 units for patio homes. So that by its nature enters into the equation and creates a creates a density, you know, parent density that's greater than what you're doing if you're framing more homes with the tighter walls for downsizing. So those are almost um, higher density in that area mixed in the, the lower density. So you, you can kind of a blend of the two on how does that affect the total density of the entire site. Because part of the special planning district is, okay, we're going to trade smaller lots for open space and save a very, you know, third of its open space. I live in Glen Lakes and we probably got 5% open space. And it was a special planning district 45 years ago. I, and I look at a couple and uh, White Pillars is 
down about two and a half, uh, and it's between 4.25 in the patio um, section that's up by the road. But there was some different math in there. I, I think it comes out to be about 2.3, and then Butterworth Glen is about 2.2. So this one, this one, one point yeah. That's again, plan is for the density gets a little bit funky because of the tag that you work in. And you know, the other thing is bringing it in low density. Um, SPD4, probably. I remember the original the porcelain. one. So, but it is surrounded on three sides, almost wrapped around it. The existing zoning around it already was being density. So that's basically what, I, what it was zoned to. It was brought into the density. But it's now being density that kind of matches it. And that's, that's what we have here. Here's the new, the new development. You've got medium density all around it, and white pillars is essentially medium density, so. I don't know what the state is working with the uh, comprehensive plan back in, this is the one that, the last one we had, this is about to sufficiently authorized, or not, not draft. It talked about residential, non-residential, mixed use, and even non-residential to any land used that, you, in, that is inferred to produce jobs, including commercial, commercial office and industrial uses. So it was, it was pretty broad and restricted what, you know, apparently um, could use for. And I'm not saying you would want it to use for that, but it was a pretty wide open uh, thought process. Yeah, this is 20 years ago, of course, but uh, on that mess up, it was pretty broad. So. Again, I, 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 I recognize the points around the, the, the value of the special plan district and, and its appropriate <coughs> I do think that the fact that this is recently annexed uh, land into the city of Buffalo bears uh, consideration as a meeting because of the fact that um, it, it, this is more or less, this is its, its first and uh, most recent opportunity to, to uh, make a recommendation of its future use. Um, yeah, the, our rules suggest a starting point which has a minimal impact on density. Uh, the annexation rules, uh, you know, by making them coming in at that residential density. From there, it, these rules, do, which we're going through, certainly apply. But to me, um, the, the, the jump from residential low density to a special planning district, which mirrors the medium density, um, only when you look at it, totality of it, yet there are pieces within the, the, the patty ones that have a deeper frame where it's even greater density, makes it a little more complicated, uh, a little more difficult to, uh, I think, to stick true to that original intent of sitting with a, with a minimal density from an annexation standpoint. <laughs> that's, that's the part I'm having a hard time. Originally, when White Pillars was, was brought before us, they wanted to have a commercial zone, and that we didn't allow that to back them down. We wanted to have your homes in white pillars. So that allowed them to, you know, what you get into on this is the value of the land is a certain percentage of the finished sale price. So if we go to lake, low density, are we saying, well, the only thing we want is a million and a half, two million dollar home? And will they sell without a golf course and all that other things <coughs> that price will be required? Fair point. But I don't know that that's what we would need to be considering whether or not in the, the, the future case. To your point, Robert White Miller, is that it went through multiple iterations yeah. before yeah. settling on, right. Uh, right. on something yeah. that was acceptable. Right. And up on 2nd Street, they want 64 units and now down to 9. So, you know, Prices we have, it's kind of not for us. I would be inclined to take it to the next meeting. Give it some more thought on it. I do some more research on it. My thought is that we're going to get the developer more time and we ought to request and stipulate a traffic study. Updated. By a third party recommended by the Same traffic study that was done for another SPE that was approved. Both attorneys and traffic studies and the same people. 
I had an updated traffic study. My this office just doesn't get us any Assuming the city engineer is not looked at this yet, yeah, it's not. not yeah. yet. Um, <coughs> So, I mean, we could also ask for, I think, the question of density. So, land use is tough because it's property, you know, we might want to say if you come in at a certain density, uh, it may not lend itself to be able to build on that density unless it's an 82 to the town. I don't know the answer to that. I mean, it's a very, look at the topographic map, it's, there's a lot of hills and trains and, you know, the ability to build houses, um, you know, even spread out across the property may not work, and with stormwater retention requirements and everything else. Um, It looks like they're laying the roads out on the ridges, yeah, and then, um, that, and that's another reason why the front lots setbacks is, is less even going closer to the road. We've run into that in a couple other subdivisions. In fact, um, the Randy Wine we eliminated the sidewalks on one side and moved the homes off the off the top of the hills like above the bike trail. So. But we want to take a look and get more information. That procedurally, procedurally, you're not tabling it or changing it. Okay. 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 Motion that direction. I move the table case. Um, Mr. Brown, just for clarification, is it, are we setting that up for the next scheduled meeting? or until we get the documents from well i was going to ask for two things for the chair um, uh, i would like to have you continue to date the special meeting or regular meeting that's the question and then number two it would be nice if you could just ask for guidance so that this right you can you be able to know what it is you'd like to see in that review period and i think it would also benefit the applicant um, i've heard you say that you'd like to have an independent traffic study but is there anything else you would like to see? I'd like to see it paid for by the developer. I think it's uh, a comparison of other special planning districts and densities would be helpful for us to understand what's been done in the past, a lot of the past. I'd also like to know how many homes in the White Pillars um, patio home area have children in the district. You know, but what what was the load that that fill in? This is so because we have 72 homes coming in with almost no children, that is a consideration. Uh, for, I mean, uh, for while we're giving our wishes, uh, <laughs> I'd like to know what you know. What are the areas in this plan that are not suitable for development? You know, and, and how how uh, strategic were those? Because they talk a lot about uh, open space and 33% of the development is open space. So, you know, personally, I'd like to have a little bit more clarity on all the specific areas. That, is it all the open space that is? Uh, one of our speakers mentioned that the, the open space is an area that is not suitable for development. So, to me, that that appears as if it is a has be that was maxed out. Uh, and, and I'd like to know if there were any um, considerations made for you know, a re reduction in the number of houses to create a little bit more of that uh, open space aspect. That information is on exhibit C, and we would have the city in there with that. Are you asking though that if something like a stream is not going to get developed, <coughs> that it not be included in a space calculation? I'm just, I guess what I'm saying is, 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 the, is the open space that is on this plan, is it, is it uh, I guess what I'm asking is, are those, what areas are not suitable for development, and then is that is that one-to-one -one correlation of the areas that are claimed as open space? That would be the way I would say. Okay. So I don't know if that'd be something that the engineer could look at. Yeah, she, yeah. She, 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 yeah. Looking at the tip see, it's pretty obvious that they're not building the school site. Right. No, I understand that, but I guess what I'm, what I'm trying to get at, Mr. Kressler, is was we're, we're there. Is every available, developable area where a house can be built? I have a question I'm asking. Is this maxed out? 
wanted to be a house in every lot. I would assume they did. I don't want to 